Hi and welcome to Themeco. In this video, we will talk about the position of a particle or a point on a body with respect to a Cartesian coordinate system. We will show you how this position, expressed as a vector, is constructed and why it is necessary to know how to calculate it. Let's jump right into it. In this course, we have mentioned that we use the multibody dynamics theory to construct models of physical mechanical systems. In this modeling process, it is key to know the position, velocity, and acceleration of specific points on the system to evaluate its performance according to certain criteria. Maybe we want to verify that certain parts of the body follow the prescribed trajectory, or we want to make sure that specific parts of the system will translate or rotate at the desired velocity. Some would say that knowing the position vector of a point is one of the most important tasks in multibody dynamics, as from this vector, the velocity and acceleration of the same point are derived. To start defining the position vector of a point on a fixed Cartesian reference system, first let's bring a 2D system. Now let's postulate two cases, one where the point, in this case a particle, is floating on the plane, and a second one where the point is a part of a body. Additionally, let's revisit a set of conventions which are valid throughout the course. As we need to identify each of these interesting points, we should give them a name, a unique name. We will be talking about point i, where i can be any integer from 1 to infinity. Another convention is that the vector quantities will be represented in bold, and scalars, not. If we pick three particles randomly positioned on a plane, we can define the position vector of each one of these particles as the vector that goes from the origin of the fixed or inertial reference system to the particle. That is, for particle 1, this would be the position vector r1. We then have r2, which represents the position vector of particle 2 with respect to the origin of the frame reference system. And finally, r3, representing the position vector of the third particle. But wait, this is not funny at all. We ended up with three letters representing the names of the vectors, but what are the corresponding values, you might ask. How do I calculate them? In this case, the position vector ri, to write it in general form, is a vector consisting of two terms, the term rxi and ryi, which are the x and y components of the vector ri measured on the coordinate axis. To know the position vector of a particle or a point in this way, you have, or I would say, you must be able to figure out or to calculate these x and y components. And let me tell you, most of the time this is not possible. For sure there is a set of known points in the system where you know right away what the components' values are, but as everything is moving so complexly, this is definitely not a trivial task. How do we manage to overcome this problem then? Let's look at our second example. Remember, I mentioned we would present two examples? In this case, our mission is to calculate the position vector of three randomly located points on a body. Let's bring a fresh new coordinate system, pretty similar to the one we have just used, and let's fill it with a really weird looking body. We will call it body A. Let's also draw on the body three points. But here comes a little twist. I will draw a fourth point that we will call the origin point of our local reference system attached to the body. Remember when I told you that there is a restricted number of points, special points, in the system, from which we can know their x and y components? Well, this is one of them. If not, this wouldn't work because it might not be possible to know the global reference system's components for these three points. They are arbitrarily located. Let's also draw this local system. We will call the axis of this local system x bar a and y bar a and they may or may not have the same orientation of the frame reference system's axis. How do I construct the position vector of these three particles then? Well, first I'm going to draw the position vector of the origin of the local reference system with respect to the global reference system, this vector that I'm going to call Ra. Now I will draw a second position vector, but this time it is the position vector of the point with respect to the origin of the local reference system. I will also give it the name of u bar a i, where i is the particle number. Let's draw this for the remaining two particles also. Now we get the position vectors r a1, r a2, and r a3. If we want, we can write the position vector of these three points in matrix form. Let's take point 1 for example. r a1 equals r a 
plus u bar a1 equals x a y a plus x bar a1 y bar a1. Notice that this equation doesn't cover the whole truth, and we will explain it further in the next video. We used one known point, the origin of the local reference system, to locate the other three points. You see that it is much easier to use this sort of triangulation to define the position vectors of those points which are difficult to locate in the global system. Imagine a mechanism with complex movements and you would like to know the position vector, velocity or acceleration of a point which is also moving complexly. It would be really difficult to calculate. Instead, it is much easier to know the position of a point with respect to a local system. A system where the point can be identifiable by its x bar a and y bar a components. In the next video, we will keep discussing the position vector of a point, but now considering the rotation angle theta a, which represents the rotation of the local reference system with respect to the global reference system. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the following lesson.